So now that we have a feel for how networks work, how they actually move traffic through the model, we noticed that there were some pretty important layers in that process. One of the big ones was layer three in the OSI model, which is where basically IP addresses are brought into the space where we can determine what network we're trying to talk on in the first place. So this begs the question, where do computers or cell phones or laptops or tablets, where do they get their IP address? I mean, I have my cell phone right here in front of me, and here's the kicker. I never manually assigned that IP address on my own. It just got an IP address. So how did that come to be? Well, it all comes down to a very important server role called DHCP. So in this video, what we're going to do is talk about what the DHCP role is and how DHCP really works. Let's go. One of the most fun things you'll ever study and work with is dynamic host control protocol because it just feels like magic. It feels like automation. The fact that we can turn a device on and it automatically grabs an IP address, configures itself, configures its way to the default gateway and out to the internet with name resolution. This is what DHCP did. The idea with it is that instead of having to plug a computer in or use any sort of wireless device and manually type in all of the network settings, it just did it for us. And this has been, you know, something that we've taken for granted, something that we've dealt with for decades now. From all the way back in the day when we were buying those blue Linksys routers off the shelf at Best Buy and we just wondered how they work, it's because of the magic of DHCP. So what is it really all about? Well, the idea is I have a device. Let's say this is a desktop computer that plugs into a network switch that goes out to some form of a router. And this device turns on, and by default, this device is, the, the computer, I should say, this computer turns on, and by default, this computer is asking for help. It's saying, I don't know what network I should actually belong to. I don't know how to get out of this network, and I don't know how to resolve domain names, like google.com. I don't know what the IP address of google.com is. That's what DHCP set out to do. And the DHCP process is a server. So even though you typically run uh, in homes, you typically run DHCP on your home router, that router is technically being a DHCP server. Now, for all intents and purposes, we'll say that in the enterprise, it's more common to see DHCP run on dedicated servers. These are going to be Windows servers, or sometimes they're even monster machines called IPAM, IP Address Management or IP Address Managers. Now, we're not going to get into IPAM because it's, that's an entirely different thing. It's massive in its own way. Uh, but what we are going to focus on right now is how does DHCP work in an enterprise? So when this computer turns on, it starts shouting. The first process here that we call this is a D or a discover message. It's basically saying like, hey, I'm trying to discover what network I belong to. I'm trying to t speak the language of DHCP. So it literally sends a broadcast message. Very important to know this term, uh, that this is a broadcast message because this basically says anyone who is on my subnet, anyone who's on my network or in my VLAN is going to receive this message. You're going to have to hear it and either ignore it by dropping it or if you're a DHCP server, you're going to have to reply. So this broadcast comes in shouting out a discover message. This is a pre-packaged, pre-formatted bit of data that says, I am looking for an IP address. So it comes into the switch and the switch floods it out all of the ports that are in the same VLAN, except the one it was received on. And that includes this port that the DHCP server is listening on. So this discover message comes in to the DHCP server and the DHCP server says, oh, well, guess what? I speak the language of DHCP here. Let me reply to you with an offer, the offer message. And the offer message says, hey, we're offering you this IP address. It's gonna be a part of this network and here's some important options like who your default gateway or your DNS server should be. But at this point, it's just an offer. This offer hasn't been actually accepted by the computer until the computer replies with a request message. It's basically saying, I've seen your offer and I would like to request that that IP address is carved out for me. I want to have 
that IP address for myself. That's what the request message does. And the last step here, I'm gonna switch back to yellow for this one. The server replies with an acknowledgement, basically saying, I've received your request, I've processed your request, that IP address is now yours, you are free to go communicating on this network or out to your default gateway or to your DNS server if that's what you so choose to do. And that's exactly how DHCP works. And it happens very, very quickly. I mean, you know, you, you turn your computer on or you turn your phone on, you connect to a wireless network, the exact same process happens over wireless as it does on a hardwired computer. It's gonna go through what we call the DORA process, discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. And that's how the IP address gets assigned. It takes a second you know, a second or two to go through the whole process and have an IP address and then communicate out to the network. It's fascinating that this happens and it happens so well. But the DHCP server requires a little bit of extra setup. When it comes to DHCP servers, what we have to outline first is called a pool, an address pool. This is where we say for a given network, like 192.168.1.0 slash 24, there's a total of basically 255 addresses here, but some of those addresses aren't going to be usable. For instance, the broadcast address is not usable by default. And lots of times, we're also going to carve out one of the IP addresses for the default gateway. So that would really leave something like 253 addresses. But maybe in that same network, we want to carve out, you know, an extra 25 addresses, so that way we can manually or statically assign servers. So out of all of these addresses, we may make a pool that's really something that's more like 192.168.1.26 through make up something like 250. We have to manually configure this on the DHCP server. We have to say what the usable IP address ranges are. We also have to configure something called options. These are additional bits of information that we can provide back when it's time to give them an IP address. Popular options are, what is your default gateway? What is your DNS server? Or are you looking for a TFTP server so that you can download a configuration? Or a Pixie boot server so that you can install an operating system over the network? There is a tremendous number of options that can actually be provided back through DHCP. And it's one of the most robust ways that you can actually automate the deployment of an entire enterprise is just through DHCP. We're gonna talk about what Pixie booting and installation is. If you haven't watched that content already, it's where we talk about how you can massively deploy a full suite of servers and desktops all over the network by just using DHCP. A computer boots up, gets its IP address, and then via DHCP, it can determine, oh, I need to go there to install my operating system. That's, it can literally be done like. Or phones, when phones boot up, they almost always grab their phone configuration from a TFTP server, and that comes through DHCP. DHCP is incredibly powerful, and I can't stress that enough. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what does it actually feel like to deploy a DHCP server in a Windows Server environment. So get ready as we start to install the Windows Server DHCP role and configure pool. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.